Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Marcus East. Um, I have the best job in the world in that I'm the Chief Technology Officer for National Geographic. And what you just saw on screen there was just a slice of the National Geographic image collection. Now, we don't think of those assets just as digital files. Every single one of those pictures that you saw tells a story. They're the stories of adventurers who've been around the world to explore unknown places, photographers who are trying to capture their knowledge of the world, or researchers who are trying to help us better understand the planet around us. And we take our responsibility at National Geographic very seriously as the custodians of those images, because those images help to tell stories, and those stories help to improve people's knowledge of the planet Earth, of its people, its animals, and its places. And by doing so, we hope that we can help people to care more about the planet, because if they care more about the planet, they're more likely to protect the planet. And so our team is incredibly excited that not only do we do things that are fantastic from a technology perspective, but we have an opportunity to do things that are actually meaningful to society. So those beautiful images, many of which that you recognized, um, obviously have to be supported by a great technology platform. And at National Geographic, we um, had what we called a system called SPY. And SPY was effectively the home for these wonderful images. It had roughly 17 terabytes of data, housing 2 million iconic images that have really helped over the last 130 years to shape the narrative coming out of National Geographic. It probably won't surprise you to hear, though, that over the last 20 years, um, the team that's responsible for running our image collection had built, um, they would describe it as lovingly hand-built, an application in Java that was, over a period of 20 years, iterated upon. Um, we discovered there was not much documentation, unfortunately. I'm sure that's a situation that none of you have ever experienced before. Um, it was hosted on-premise. And it was managed by an operations team without technical oversight. And um, from my perspective, when I first joined National Geographic two years ago, it was obvious to me that it had what we describe as a suboptimal information security posture. Now, that's a situation that was clearly not acceptable to us. And interestingly, that system that was housing the crown jewels of National Geographic um, found itself under intense scrutiny. And our VP of Information Security came to me and she said, Marcus, I think we have a bit of a problem. This system is not really fit for purpose. In terms of the, the legacy that we're protecting, we need to do something about this. And we unfortunately took the decision to take that system offline. And we worked with the business team to come up with a solution. We helped them to remediate the issues. And after many, many months of this, and we realized that this was actually not going to work. And we had to take some drastic action. Our CEO came to my office and said, uh, Marcus, we need to do something here. I'd like your team to take responsibility for this. And this was in November of 2018. Your team has to take responsibility for this, has to fix this application and get it back online. And as he was leaving my office and he said, and by the way, it must be up by January 2019. So that's obviously not something that you ever want to hear. We had a situation where the crown jewels of our organization were in a system that needed help. We had a very limited time in which to do something. And the thing that was driving the need to do something was what we call our Storytellers Summit, where all of the famous photographers that tell these National Geographic stories around the world were coming to Washington, DC to National Geographic headquarters in order to celebrate photography. And obviously, that was not going to be a great story if we didn't have the archive up and running. The good news is we like a challenge in the product and technology function at National Geographic. And in fact, two of my colleagues here, Melissa Wiley, our VP of Digital Products, and Mike Debnam, our VP of Engineering, huddled with me in my office. And we said, all right, what are we going to do here in order to resolve this problem? We didn't have much time. We were familiar with the cloud. We had spent a lot of time working on a migration to the cloud. But we realized that this needed to be something special, something more. We decided to reach out to our friends at Google Cloud. 
And the reason that we did that was not just because we felt that they had incredible technology and a great solution to the problems that we were facing, but we felt there was a, an alignment of values. In our conversations with them, we understood that they cared as much about the environment as we do. Things like sustainability were things that they talked about when proposing to us um, using Google Cloud as a possible platform. And we then set about, just before Thanksgiving, the process of putting this incredibly valuable archive back online. Google worked very closely with us, both from a technology perspective, but also from a professional services perspective. We um, introduced a third party called Globant, and in fact, that was Google's suggestion. We already had an existing relationship with Globant, so we were very happy to work with them. And you can imagine what the next eight weeks was like with a team of people working around the clock to take this legacy application, to move it into Google Cloud, to protect it. In this case, we used technologies from both Okta and Akamai to protect access to that application. Um, and we were able to get it up and running in time for the Storyteller Summit. Now, that's not something that we would necessarily want to do again. I would not encourage anyone in the room who's a technologist to sign up for an eight-week mission-critical deployment to the cloud, but we did it. And I would say that it was incredibly rewarding to work with both Google Cloud and Glebont to get that done. You can't have a CTO on the stage without an architectural diagram, of course. Um, I don't have time to go into this, but what I would say is that one of the beauties for us in working with Google Cloud was the flexibility that they brought. I think when Tarek made his opening comments, he really um, brought that home with this focus on solving business problems. The fact that we had other systems that were connected to Spy and other systems that were dependent on it wasn't an inhibitor to working with Google Cloud to get this application up and running. So what about the future? We've obviously been able to take this application and get it into Google Cloud, make it available to our photographers and our internal stakeholders again, and that's been wonderful. In fact, I received hugs and kisses from our photographers as a result of us having done that. But there is an interesting future. One of the reasons that we chose to work with Google Cloud was our excitement about tools such as AutoML and the Cloud Vision API that will allow us to do things such as enriching the metadata that goes with these wonderful images that we have in our image collection. And we believe that we can utilize the power of GCP and some of the native capabilities in Google Cloud to build even more compelling stories and even more compelling experiences in the future. But the most important thing is that the legacy of our photographers is now safe. And these are not just the legacies of these individual photographers. In some respects, they are part of the legacy of humanity. These are stories that need to be told, that people need to understand. And I'm delighted to say that working with Google Cloud, we were able to secure the image collection, not just for ourselves, but for many, many generations to come. <laughs>